Grade 8 math number 3.2b, use a graph to find rate of change. In the last video, we talked about the rate of change and that it's a ratio of the amount of change in the dependent variable or output to the amount of change in the independent variable or input. We talked about a function too. And this is basically what we said. If x is the input and y is the output, and we have an equation, which is our function, like y is equal to x plus five, if we put in a two for the x, the y output is gonna be a seven. And for each distinct number we put in, we're gonna have a distinct number that comes out. See, a particular number. So this function, this equation, is an input-output relationship that has exactly one output for each input. It's like a plus equals relationship. And some functions can be represented by an equation like this with two variables. For each input value substituted for the x, there's exactly one output value for the y. Three would be three plus five, that would equal eight for y. Four for the x would be four plus five, that'd be nine for the y. And the y over the x is the output over the input, and that tells us our rate of change. In the last video, we used a table and compared rates of change from one day to the previous day for the money Emma earned from walking dogs. We can also use a graph to find rates of change. We've got a graph right here, and it shows miles going up for our y-axis and time and hours going horizontally for our x-axis. You can see our origin of zero, zero right here. Well, this graph shows the distance that Lisa walked on a hike in six hours. So what's Lisa's rate of change? So the first thing we do is find the rate of change from one hour to three hours. Now, it was a six-hour hike. So what we're doing is we're comparing the beginning to the middle. We're going to compare the beginning of her hike to the middle of the hike. And we're going to find y over x, the change in distance over the change in time, the miles over the hours. So at three hours, she walked nine miles. And at one hour, she walked three miles. Nine take away three is six. Three take away one is two. That's six over two. That's three miles per hour. That was the beginning to the middle. Now we're going to compare the beginning to the end. We're going to compare this beginning to the end of her hike. So we're comparing the one hour mark to the six hour mark. That's the y over x is the change in distance, the miles over the change in time, the hours. At six hours, she walked 18 miles, and at one hour, she walked three miles. The 18 minus the three is 15. The six hours minus the one hour is five. 15 divided by five is three. So it was the same miles per hour as in the beginning to middle to the end there. Now we're just gonna compare the middle to the end. So we did the middle to the beginning. We did the beginning to the end. Now we're gonna compare the middle to the end, the last part. So we're gonna do three hours to six hours. Well, the six hour mark, remember, was 18 miles and the three hour mark was nine. 18 take away 9 is 9, and 6 take away 3 is 3. Simplify 9 over 3, and it's 3 miles per hour. Look, there was a constant, wasn't there, of 3 miles per hour? It didn't change at all. So remember, the graph of a proportional relationship is a straight line through the origin, just like this one's going. And from our graph, we can say the relationship between Lisa's time and the distance is a proportional relationship. Now. What if we only use data from the first three hours? Would we be sure the rate of change was accurate all the way through the six hour hike? No. We needed values from the top of the line to be sure. We needed to compare to the top, to the end of our hike, to be absolutely sure that there was a constant rate of change. See? So her constant is her k, the constant rate of change, is three. See? All right, we're going to talk about calculating the slope m on a graph in our next video and it's really a simple concept if this is going up like this what you do is you count the rise that's how many boxes it's going up compared to the run how many boxes it's going across and you write it as a fraction as the rise on top of the run and you simplify it i'll show you it's really simple once you look at it okay Remember, I'm on Twitter, and I can post any of the whiteboards you request to be a study guide so that you can print it or keep it in a file. And don't forget I'm on Patreon.com. I really need your monthly support, okay? I keep my videos ad-free, and 
I'm on disability and I can't work. So I make my videos when I can and I'd really appreciate your help. See you next video. Bye.